Hey, what's going on? It's Joe from Gatchetry Tech. Uh, this is gonna be a short video. It's a different format than what I normally do. I usually do very in-depth reviews. However, I can't do that on all of these products yet because one of them is just being announced as of today, which is why I decided to do this press release news episode one style video. So um, I wanna talk about two other products real quick, then I wanna get into the new headset from Odyssey and talk about that. Uh, so with that being said, let's dive right in. This is the niche piety, and I'm just showing you because there is so many cool amp technologies and products out there, and this is no different. This is a really special amp, it's $150. They only made a thousand of these. Um, I tweeted and posted at my community page the day it went live. They sold out within 12 hours of releasing this product, and that's it. It was a one-off run. It's using transistors that you can't really get anymore. They're sourced out of the country, even though this is built in the US. Um, Basically, it's $150, but it has a very similar topology to the shit Jotunheim 2, which is a $400 amp. So more compact chassis, a little bit less power, one watt, but it has tube-like sound without the tube characteristics necessarily um, when you look at like drawbacks of tubes, potential drawbacks of tubes. So it's a unique sounding amp. It's not a purely flat, clean, analytical, solid state amp. It is a solid state amp but it's built to sound almost more like a tube. And that's through how the topology is inside with their transistors wired, or I guess configured on the PCB a certain way. Um, it's a really cool amp. I might do an in-depth review on this. Um, it's kind of hard to review something that most people can't uh, buy anymore unless you look secondhand. But I think even as secondhand, depending on the price range, it's still something good to look at. So uh, it sounded amazing. And I brought out the HD 560S because that Sennheiser $200 headphone with the niche piety amp um, was insane. I like that is the best I've ever heard my 560S sound paired with this little amp. And I have like much more expensive amp and source gear. So I was shocked that it sounded so well. Not gonna pair amazing with everything. It has its own unique warmth, a little bit softer uh, edges, you know, if you will, as far as like the soft clipping goes, but it's a cool sound. I'll probably get into it more, but take a look online just to learn about it because it's kind of cool technology. The other thing I want to talk about, Master and Dynamic. I haven't talked about the MG20 much. It was featured as like an extra recommendation in my best wireless headset review um, or video that I made. Uh, but they collaborated. They do Master and Dynamic. I didn't know they did it to this level, but they do a lot of collaborations with other companies for other products. They've teamed with Mercedes, AMG, Lamborghini, um, a few other brands, artists, you name it. And the result is basically the same product, marked up a little bit, but with a unique design. Now, I'm not telling you to go spend more money for the unique design, but I think it's cool that they're doing that because not everyone wants white and black, and it's nice to have options. So I'm pointing this out. Instead of $450, I have my notes, by the way. This was like a really quick video because I'm so excited to talk about the big announcement. Uh, but it's 500 bucks instead of 450. You still get the amazing beryllium drivers, which is extremely rare for any headset or headphone, period. I think this is the only gaming headset that uses beryllium, which has an amazing detail retrieval. Um, the mid-range is great. Never had an issue with sound quality with the MG20. It has lambskin ear pads, crazy comfortable. Absolutely love it. It just doesn't work on Xbox, and it's basically using Bluetooth for everything, not multi-source. Bluetooth at the same time. So it's great for mobile and it works extremely well on PlayStation. Um, just make sure you do the firmware update. So again, for the $50 extra, that collab that they did with Bape actually gives you the pink and blue camo options. You can choose one over the other, or you can save yourself 50 bucks and get it in the white, the black, the olive green color, and this like beige color, which actually looks pretty cool too. They also did the collab with the MW08 wireless earbuds. Those guys also use beryllium and they're 350 instead of 300. So pretty cool, just different that you get a unique pattern in print that I don't normally see on this stuff. Now for the big announcement, Odyssey dropped a bombshell this week. Uh, this has been teased for a while. They've been working on this. I heard about this months ago, but I wasn't able to get more information yet. Um, it's all been under embargo. So Odyssey just dropped a new headset as of today called the Maxwell. It is a new replacement headphone to the Penrose and Mobius line. It's a gaming headset, but with a lot of upgrades. And somehow, some way, even with inflation and all these improvements and things they're talking about, they kept the base price the same. It's $300 for the new Maxwell with in improvements across the board, at least on paper. 
So I'm doing this video because you can't get it yet. The release comes out tomorrow. You can buy it soon. I don't know if you can start doing pre-orders. So I wanted to make this video to at least give you some basic info about it, help you figure out if it's worth taking the risk or not. I am getting one or two. I'm gonna to try to get both versions, but I know I'm getting at least one as soon as possible. And then I'll do my really in-depth review where I do EQ tuning, frequency response measurements, talk about game sound, music, the wireless performance, the mic, you name it, comfort, etc. So getting right into it, the Maxwell has a detachable hypercardioid mic designed by Shure. It has a spring steel headband with adjustable suspension straps, so they're addressing comfort. The yokes are made of aluminum and they've done tuning at the physical level in the ear cups, which means they don't have to rely on digital signal processing as much to fix or tune any sound imperfections. So um, the, there's some big changes with this. So interestingly, they are using a 90 millimeter driver instead of 100. Now, 100 is huge. Every gaming headset that I've reviewed is typically 40 or 50 millimeter. You might get a couple 60s or a 52, you know, HyperX, et cetera. Um, but the Penrose was 100. It is a massive driver. It's planar magnetic, totally different technology than what you're used to. Um, some of the newer Odyssey headphones have been using 90 millimeter drivers. So until I can get my hands on it and look at the driver, I don't know how similar it is to their much more expensive counterparts, but it's interesting they went to 90. They must have found something that they really liked with the way they can tune it or, or package it. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how it sounds. Now, the big things for me, so just to be straight, I have my notes and I'm going off script because I, I, this is so important. I like the Penrose, okay? It has so much potential. It had These planar drivers get crazy loud. It's the loudest wireless gaming headset I've ever had. The issues that people had with the Penrose weren't so much on the sound quality. It was that the clamp was a little strong. Um, the ear pads led to some discomfort. And you had some people that had wireless connection issues, you know, or physical breakage at the yoke. I'm not sitting here trying to roast the Penrose because mine still works. Mine's still holding up well. Um, and interestingly, for some reason, the last few months I've been going back to test it to compare against all the other new launches like the Nova Pro, they've worked perfectly every damn time, which it didn't a year and a half ago when I did my review. So these have been working well. However, the issues I had was the comfort and clamp force in my wireless. They specifically call out these changes. So it has a user replaceable strap because it has a suspension headband. So the comfort's gonna be great. Um, at least it should be great. I'm speculating based off the changes. They said the dongle is improved by 3X. Wireless performance is better. Now, whether that means purely on sound quality or wireless stability, we will see. However, anything or any focus and call out to the wireless dongle improving is a good thing. And I'm hopeful that it makes it basically flawless. Um, they also rate it for 10 to 50,000 hertz, which is beyond human hearing. 10 to 20 to 20,000 is basically all you have to worry about. The big change on the wireless side, so the new Maxwell supports Bluetooth 5.3, which includes um, LC3 and LC3 Plus codecs. And when you're streaming on your phone, it supports SBC, AAC, LDAC. No mention of AppDex, that may change, but we will see. Uh, they also said they improved the mic. Now the Penrose and Mobius mics weren't that bad, but the new one is an upgraded capsule designed by Shure, a professional microphone company. It's hypercardioid. And the big kicker with this one is that the Maxwell is actually using artificial intelligence tuning from their, um, they call it the filter. It's like a conference call speaker system that won like product of the year or some innovative product of the year from Time Magazine just in this past year. So they leveraged all that new technology and IP they had on a speaker tech to improve the characteristics of the microphone to reject background noise without making your voice sound bad. Um, the battery life, another issue with the old Penrose is you'd be lucky if you got 15 hours. It was rated for 15, but I really got closer to 12. Uh, the Maxwell's rated for 80 plus at over 80 decibels. 80 is loud and going for 80 hours straight, you're literally going for over a week on a single charge, depending on how hardcore you game. You're talking possibly two to three weeks on one charge. So two things I wanna to mention too, the PlayStation version is $300. PlayStation and PC also works on Nintendo Switch, also works on Mac. Um, so there's a lot of compatibility there. Now for $50 more for 350, you get the Xbox version. Historically, Xbox and PlayStation headsets have always cost the same. 
So this is a little bit of a departure. However, you're getting more on the Xbox version because the Xbox version does everything the PlayStation version does plus Xbox. Um, there's one asterisk, which I'll get into in a sec. But basically, if you get the Xbox version, it comes with a Dolby Atmos license. So on Xbox, you can do tune and do some custom EQ there in addition to benefiting from the Dolby Atmos object-based uh, virtual sound. Even the Xbox version will still work on PlayStation as well. So flick the switch to USB mode. So the Xbox version at 350 adds the Dolby license and works on every single platform. If you don't have an Xbox, save the $50. Now, Xbox forces uh, manufacturers to install a special chip. It's like an encrypted wireless communication module for the Xbox to recognize it. That always costs more money, so there's typically less margin on Xbox headsets and gear. That's likely why that brought up the price a little bit in addition to the Dolby Atmos license and the USB has that physical switch to switch it over to Xbox first PC slash PlayStation mode. Now the Xbox version will still work on Mac. It will still work on the Nintendo Switch. That's all in addition to the Bluetooth. The things that haven't been called out specifically is I don't know if it's simultaneous Bluetooth. It should be, but I, will, I won't know until I confirm it. Um, and it talks about game to chat mix on multiple consoles. So the Xbox version does have a game to chat mix dial, so you can adjust that, which is great. This is the first time I've seen since the in-zone headsets come out though, but in my marketing material that I got, it showed with a little asterisk that if you bought the PlayStation version, you will get game to chat mix. I have no idea how that's gonna work. We will see, it could just be a typo. I've seen this happen on other products before from different brands. Um, but that is a very interesting asterisk. So I will revisit that later once I can confirm if that works or not. Um, so I'm just checking my notes to make sure I didn't miss anything. I mean, honestly, what it comes down to, it's like a new and improved Penrose that could be better in every single way. It is a little bit heavier. It's almost 500 grams instead of, you know, in the mid threes. Um, yeah, 490 grams versus 320. So the weight is there, but... Seriously, I am excited for this. I don't get biased with my reviews. I'm gonna, whether they send me one fast enough or not, I'll be buying one. Um, it won't change what I say. Like I said, I was a little bit critical of the Penrose when I had my issues. Um, but this is shaping up to be an absolute killer in the wireless segment. It's gonna be really interesting to see how it stacks up against the Nova Pro Wireless, which is kind of like king of the hill right now for best wireless headset. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. I just wanted to get you excited because I am. I can't wait to try something different from Odyssey for gaming. That should be a lot of fun. And again, with the color changes, this unique amp, there's so much good and exciting stuff in the audio world. I'll be covering all as much as I can. Thank you all so much for the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified because I will be reviewing and releasing that review as soon as possible. So stay tuned for that. Thank you as always. I'll see you next time.